If you're watching this video, you already know what a solid of revolution is. It's an object formed by rotating a function around a line. And the one you'll be familiar with is rotating it around the x-axis. And you find that volume using the following formula. Pi times the integral between b and a of f of x squared with respect to x. But what if our solid of revolution wasn't around the x-axis? What if it was around the y-axis? Well, first of all, you'd get this neat little shape here. This one looks like a bit of a, like a trumpet or a cone or something. All right, but this formula is not going to work because that formula is finding that volume of revolution, not that volume of revolution. No good. We need a new formula. So you can see it looks very similar to this with some key differences. Volume equals pi times the integral between b and a. b and a are not what you think they are. Function of y squared. Function of y. And then a little with respect to y on the end. With respect to y. That's something a little bit different as well. All right, let's get rid of the stuff we don't need and talk about that for a second. So first of all, looking at that b and that a. The a is this point here still. But the b is not this point here. The b is this point here here in line with where we're, we're finishing there. So these values and these values are y values, not x values. Now this whole function of y thing, function of y with respect to y, this is a trick here where we're going to take this function and find the inverse. We're going to rotate, or sorry, we're going to reflect it around a 45 degree angle. So it's no longer like that, it's like that. And we'll actually be finding the area, or sorry, the volume around the x-axis which will be the same as the volume around the y-axis. So I'm taking it, turning it into that, and then finding that. That's what this formula has the effect of doing. You can see this trumpet here looks the same as that trumpet there. And that's what we're doing when we're converting it from a function of x to a function of y. Let's do one. So if you saw my previous video on volumes of solids of revolution, you'll know we were rotating around the x-axis, this function, f of x equals root x. This time I'm going to take the same function, f of x equals root x, and rotate it around the y-axis and find that volume. All right, so we already know our formula for that. Pi uh, times the integral between b and a of f of y with respect to y. Now, the a and the b values, you might think that's really easy. You'll say, right, 0 and 6, but you're only half right there, right? Because the a and the b values are not this value and this value. It's this value and this value right here. Right, so I can easily find that value because I know f of x equals root x, which means that f of 6 equals root 6. All right, so I know that's it. So I can say that my volume is between this point, which happens to be 0, 0, so it is going to be 0 there, but then this point is root 6. So that's my a and my b values taken care of, but this f of y. It's a really easy idea. We just need to rearrange f of x equals root x so that we've got x isolated on one side and we've got a function with y as the variable inside of it. So f of x equals root x, we can rewrite it as y equals root x. We can then rewrite that as x equals y squared. Now I just might write that the other way around just so I can really show you, hammer home what's happening here. x equals y squared, and now we can say that a function of y equals y squared. All right, so take a look at what's happening here. A function of x equals root x. Function of x kind of means y, means y-axis. y equals root x. And then I rearrange this to isolate x. I'm really finished there. I can just write f of y equals y squared, which is what I'm doing here. All right, so we're just flipping it around, isolating x, and that'll give us our function of y. Now that I know that, and now that I know that, I can fill in my full formula there. So volume equals pi times between 0 and root 6 um, f of y, which is y squared, squared with respect to y. All right, that's going to be pi times the integral of root 6 and 0 of y squared squared, which is y to the 4, with respect to y. And now I can integrate that, which will be y to the 5 over 5. From here, it's all grunt work. It's pi times, we sub in root 6, we sub in 0, and then we multiply that by pi. 
All right, so we're pretty much done here. This minus 0 to the 5 over 5, that's just 0. So we're left with root 6 to the 5 over 5. Just make sure I'm clear there. Times that pi. I can simplify this a little bit further. Root 6 to the 5 is the same as root 6 to the 4 times root 6. And root 6 to the 4 is the same as root 6 squared squared. Root 6 squared is 6. 6 squared is 36. I can say that the volume is equal to 36 root 6 pi over 5. And that's units cubed. And now you might be thinking to yourself, well, I've done a lot of calculations here. Maybe I've made a mistake. Uh, you can check the reasonableness pretty well with this. Because your volume of solid of revolution is this little trumpet shape here. But if we draw in this straight green line that I've already drawn in, well, that's a cone. That's just an upside down cone. And we know how to find the volume of a cone. So if we find the volume of the cone, we'll know whether our answer is at least close to what it should be. All right, so let's think about this for a second. We have a height of root 6 for our cone. We have a radius of 6, and that's enough information. Look at how interesting this gets. Volume equals pi r squared height over 3. Pi, we had pi in our thingy here. That's not unsurprising. r squared, well, the radius is 6, so 6 squared is 36. Uh -huh. um, we have a height here of root 6, root 6, 36 root 6, pi, check that out, and then we have it divided by 3. You can see, well, what are these volumes in terms of like actual numbers? Well, it doesn't look great, right, because the volume of this one is 55, if I find a decimal approximation. When I checked it, 92. So my check is almost double, not quite, of what my actual answer is. This is what I think the answer is. This is my check for reasonableness. It's worth taking another look at this and making sure that, well, hang on, have I made a mistake? Before we go through all this, though, examine your diagram again. Remember that this is um, y equals root x, which we know the inverse of is y squared. When you draw a parabola, it looks a little bit like that, right? Now, if I drew a straight line here, so there's my volume of solid of revolution, you can see there's a big chunk of it missing here, right? So we definitely expect the volume of solid of revolution to be smaller than the cone. And I think that this is going to curve enough that the volume is going to be almost, almost, not quite, a half. So I think I'm okay. All right, but it's definitely worth doing some sort of check like that. I feel like I've nailed it. Okay, that's volumes of solids of revolution around the y-axis.